I want to talk to you about a change of basis matrix. And here's the setup for that. Uh, the setup is that we have two different bases. And let me denote them this way. So I'll say one is called B, and it's the vectors B1 through Bm. And the other uh, basis I'll call it U, and I'll let those be the vectors U1 through Um. And uh, the key idea here is that these are both bases for the same space. These are both bases for what? Well, let's say that they're bases for some space called V, which uh, is a subspace of Rn. Okay. Now, notice that the M and the N are different here. So V might be uh, of dimension smaller than N. Uh, it could be all of Rn, but it, may, it doesn't have to be. Um, for us to complete this story. So the question is this, if I know the coordinates of a vector with respect to the spaces B, is there a way to change it into the coordinates uh, with respect to U, to find its coordinates with respect to U in a straightforward way? And uh, this being linear algebra, of course, the answer is yes. There's always a matrix to do that kind of thing, right? So let me restate the question. If I have the coordinates of X with respect to B, is there a matrix to multiply? Yes, there is. To give me the vector, excuse me, the coordinate vector of x with respect to u. Uh, so yes, but let's see, let's see how we can break this down. Let's see what we do, that, what we know here. Um, we certainly know how to change the coordinates of x with respect to b into x, how to recover x from that, right? Because, well, what are coordinates after all? Coordinates are this. If I say that the coordinates of x with respect to b are these numbers, well, what does that mean? Coordinates, after all, are this. Those are the scalars that I use to make x. When I use a linear combination, that is, of the vectors b1 through bm, those are the right scalars to use. Um, so, uh, but a, a one way that we like to think of a linear combination of this is uh, as a matrix product, right? Because if I take these vectors b1 through bm and I align them like this in columns in a matrix and I multiply that by c1 down to cm, then I'm really reproducing this linear combination here to get x. And what is this? This here is indeed the coordinate vector of x with respect to b. So this is the this is the matrix here. This is the matrix that I multiply this coordinate vector by if I want to get x. So that's let me label this arrow with that because that's what does this job. Let me label this b1 through bm. Align those vectors together in a matrix, and you have um, the correct matrix to use to multiply this to get that. And of course, that also works with this basis. I would take the u vectors, align them in a matrix like this, and I have the right matrix to multiply the coordinate vector of x with respect to u to get x again back in Rn. Um, so let's pause for a moment here to kind of think about the size of everything here. This x vector, we're in Rn, right? So this x is a vector in Rn. But let's remember that v doesn't necessarily have dimension n. It might have dimension m, which might be something smaller than n. But it could be n, but it might be smaller than n. Um, so uh, this vector, this matrix here, let's think about what size it would be. Um, I have m vectors across, right? Uh, so I have m vectors across. But how many? Uh, how tall is this vector here? That vector is n tall, right? Because b1 is a vector in Rn, like all these other vectors are in Rn. So this is an uh, an n by m matrix here. It's n tall. It's m across. n by m. It's not a square matrix. It's not necessarily a square matrix. Well, that makes sense because let's think about the size of this. This is a coordinate vector of x with respect to b. And coordinates, you really only need m coordinates to make a vector out of the basis in B when you have something in V, right? So this is something in Rm. It's not an Rn, this coordinate vector. Same could be said for this. This is also coordinate vector in Rm. So, uh, and of course, this uh, matrix very similarly is an n by m matrix. Uh, 
Now let's think about this matrix that we were first wondering about. Is there a matrix that I can multiply this by in order to get that? What size would it be? Well, it would have to change an m dimensional vector into another m dimensional vector. So what we're looking for here is an m by m matrix over here that will do this job. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out what does that. Well, let me keep track of a particular vector here because how do I get this is a linear transformation after all I multiply this by something to get something and I have to multiply by a matrix I'm talking about a transformation how do I find the matrix for a linear transformation and the answer is well just like any other uh, linear transformation you need to pay attention to a very particular matrix excuse me a very particular vector and that's the one that has all zeros in it except for in one position you have the number one okay so what I'm trying to draw over here is the vector which is all zeros except for a one in the ith position in position I so let's think about what happens to this under this transformation well we just have to recognize that this if we want to think of it as the coordinate vector of X with respect to B uh, what what X does this represent well what is the vector whose coordinates are every are all zeros except for one in the ith position. Well, let's think about the scalar multiples over here. Scalar, uh, the linear combination. If all these c's are, are zero except for uh, ci being one, then what is x? x works out to be bi, right? So this, this, this vector that we call ei in the standard basis here is actually the coordinate vector of of bi with respect to b. Let's write that down. This is in fact bi with respect to b. It's coordinates, right? The coordinate vector of bi with respect to the basis b that bi lives in is the coordinate vectors containing coordinate vector containing all zeros except for one in the ith position. That's obvious if you just think about what the coordinates are. Okay, great. So this bi here, let's kind of keep, let's think of this particular kind of setup here where, where all these x's are bi. So if this is bi with respect to b, in other words, it does correspond to ei here, then that will give me a bi over here. And then now I have to ask, okay, so what's the correct thing that I put down here, which corresponds to the bi over there? Well, because of everything matching up here, this is bi you know, the X is being fixed here to be BI. This is the coordinate vector of BI, excuse me, I'm below the page there. Um, this is BI with respect to U. That's what this corresponds to now. So the EI vector up here should map to, should correspond to the BI uh, coordinate vector with respect to U. So that is indeed describing the matrix that I use to multiply this to get that because I'm paying attention to what happens to this column here, this EI, where it's all zeros except for one like that. And that's indeed how you construct a matrix for a linear transformation. The matrix for the linear transformation is the one that you get by paying attention to what happens to this and just aligning those results in columns. So if I'm paying attention to that then, then what are these columns working out to be? They are just B1 with respect to U, B2 with respect to U, and so on. And we end with the coordinate vector of BM with respect to U. And I'm sorry, that's a little sloppy but there, but I hope you get it. So this is the matrix. That's the matrix that corresponds to uh, this transformation from coordinate vector of x with respect to b to give us the coordinate vector of x with respect to u. I think I ought to write that down here to make that crystal clear. Let's write something a little bit darker. If I take this matrix b1 with respect to u all the way up to bm with respect to u, if I align those results in columns and I multiply the coordinate vector of any uh, excuse me the coordinate vector of any vector x with respect to the basis b then what I get is the coordinate vector of x with respect to the basis u and one more thought I should say that this is right here denoted we like to call this something like 
s from b to u. I don't know how standard that notation is, but that's one way we could write this. It's a matrix, and what it does is it converts coordinates from b into u, and this is what we call the change of coordinates, uh, <laughs> what do we call it? The change of coordinates matrix. Enjoy. <laughs>